The Fed's role is not a, a, a social welfare um, role, but um, many would argue that the fall in the unemployment rate, the re-engagement of, of many people uh, within the labor market who are out on the edges, um, that what we're seeing over the last couple of years has been extremely positive for, for the U.S. economy and, and the U.S. population. Um, is that um, something that is taken into consideration that if we can continue to run the economy a little bit hot, um, that it could be um, quite a positive? I would, so I would say that the, um, I see that aspect of the current situation as a, as a very positive one. I guess I would question the, the concept of running the economy hot. I think we've learned that uh, the unemployment rate can just be lower than we anticipated. Even in five or six or ten years ago, it's, it's um, significantly lower, and yet we don't see wages rising in a way that is out of keeping with productivity and inflation. And we don't see, we do see um, businesses saying that they see workers as scarce. We see workers saying that they believe jobs are plentiful. Those are good things. We see prime age labor force participation going up. Uh, we see, um, we see, we talk to people in those low and moderate income communities at the Fed Listens events, and they say that this is the best economy they've seen in their lifetimes. So I would say I put a very high priority on wanting to continue that. I, I really do. But I, I guess I, I do a little bit balk at the idea that we're running the economy hot. It, it just feels, this feels very sustainable. There's no aspect of the economy that is just booming. It's, it's just, you, you've got a solid com consumer sector where people are, wages are going up, but they're going up right about at, at the level of productivity plus inflation. Um, job creation is healthy. Um, there's no one sector that is, you know, you know, that like a housing bubble. There's nothing like that. There's no financial bubble. So it's a fairly sustainable um, economy. There are concerns around, you know, business uh, investment and manufacturing and trade, of course. But, um, I, yeah, I, I would say we don't get to see the 11th year of, of an expansion very often. And there are a lot, there's a lot to like about it, uh, particularly for people at the lower end of the wage scale who are getting now the highest increases. And it would be great to see it continue. Right. So one of the, um, if, if we look at the markets, we see that the uh, purchasing of, of insurance f to hedge inflation risk is at all-time lows or extremely benign. Uh, but at the same time, we're in the midst of starting to increase uh, tariffs on, on China. We're, we're seeing uh, a few, several rounds that are going to come through. Um, as that starts to show up in the CPI prints, et cetera, um, how does the Fed respond to those? You know, I think the, the basic um, approach to that for me would be that an, an increase in tariffs is, if, it's, if it flows through to the consumer, is a, perhaps a one-time increase in prices, which is a different thing from inflation. As long as one-time increases in prices don't carry, carry through into inflation expectations, then um, you don't actually have an increase in inflation. So. Now, it's clear that if you look back at the history of the, of the 70s with the, with the oil crisis, some of those shocks can get, they can affect. If they're sustained and repeated, they actually can get into people's inflation expectations. We're a long way from that, though. Look, if you look around the world, disinflationary pressures everywhere you look in advanced economies, uh, it, doesn't, it feels like the problem of this era is to keep inflation from moving down and try to keep it at 2%. Now, of course, if that changes, then you know, we'll, we'll know it pretty quickly and we'll know what to do. Great. Well, uh, Chair Powell.